Do you believe in miracles? Does God answer prayers? Maybe you're wondering if God really cares about you. Sit tight, my friend, because my guest is Lee McClelland, pastor of the Ark Church in Belfast, Northern Ireland. And he, well, he has just been through hell and back. And at his lowest point, God proved to Pastor Lee that God cares. Lee, thank you for joining us on the Upper Room. Good to be with you. Good to be with you. Lee, let's rewind a couple of weeks. You were diagnosed with the coronavirus and mm. you're feeling really, really sick. So much so, you're rushed to hospital in an ambulance. Mm. Can you quickly describe to us what your condition was like and what it was like in hospital? I really was struggling with uh, breathing. I had a temperature of 39.8. My body was in serious pain and uh, the, the, the breathing was labored. So we phoned 999. When uh, they brought me in, immediately uh, they started uh, to work. And when I say work, uh, drips went up, uh, IV drips went up for pain relief uh, to help bring the temperature down in some shape or form. Uh, they hit me with steroid injections to try and help the lungs they finally moved me to what was known as the COVID-19 ward. And that was an isolation ward where you were then put in a room by yourself. Uh, that's when the, the, the doctors and the nurses and the consultants really began to take over. And they would really just come in. It, it was something, Craig, from a space movie. You know, they, they came in with the masks on, the shields up on their faces, the gowns wrapped around them, the gloves on them. And it really, it really was quite intimidating. And the, the frightening thing was, Craig, was that I actually got a lot worse. I actually came to a place where I began to maybe settle in my own life and my own mind and heart that I, I might not get through this. One of the things that I, I managed to keep was this. I, I have a discipline, Craig, that every morning I get up, I read the scriptures. Every morning. And even in the, the depths of despair, I kept that discipline. I woke up, I read the scriptures. I just read the word of God. And I just let the word of God minister to my heart in some way. But, you know, there was there was the, the vast majority of time, not, nothing was speaking to me. I was just re reading out of discipline and, and asking God. And, 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 I, and, I, and I just became, came to this place where it, it was quite strange because Although I, I had prayed for myself, although I had asked God to minister to me uh, many, many times throughout the day, one of the things you became aware of, Craig, was this. I'm not the only person on this ward. And you began to realize, hold on, there's other people, there's other families. And then you began to look at the, the medical staff and you began to, I many times began to pray for them because it allowed me to stop thinking about myself all the time and allowed me to begin to pray for others. So it was, again, it was a very surreal experience in the, in the midst of chaos. And so there you are in the critical unit, mm -hmm. totally isolated. Yeah. And then suddenly you get a visitor. Yeah. Tell us more yeah. about, about that. Yeah, uh, the, uh, I, I had been through, as I had alluded to, two nights of hell. <laughs> And that was the moments where I had settled in my heart that, that I may not come through this. And I began to prepare my heart for that. But in that cry, I also asked the Lord to somehow encourage me. And, and whether it was a supernatural touch, whether it was somehow someone that was able to encourage my heart. And at that time, I was actually thinking of a phone call because no one no one other than nurses and doctors could come, came, come and get to me. And, and I was thinking even of a phone call or just something, Craig, that would have really touched my heart and brought up a bit of light in, in this chaos and darkness. And uh, that next morning, it was the morning that, you know, up until this point, cleaners had been in there every day, Craig. But this next morning, a, a different cleaner had come in. 
And as he came in, he just began to clean and 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 I and I began to chat with him and he began to chat with me. And I th- actually think I asked him the question, are you by any chance a believer or a churchgoer? I got that sense from him. And he actually says, I actually am. So that allowed me the opportunity uh, to then ask him a few more questions. And I asked him a few more questions and he began to share how he was a, a, a missionary for many, many years in Nigeria. Wow. And that just warmed my heart. And so <laughs> as he's talking about now his life and how God had used him and how souls had come to Christ in Nigeria, this was the ray of sunshine I'd been looking for. I'd, I was so overwhelmed. I says, tell me more about about that and tell me more about yourself. And and I was so so I was so encouraged by his testimony. <laughs> And then at the end, he says, is there an opportunity that I could pray with you, Pastor? And I just says, you know, that would be absolutely wonderful. And he prayed at the door and he just asked the Lord to preserve my life. He asked the Lord to touch my body and he asked the Lord to give me an opportunity that my testimony or my life could be used to reach others. And uh, with that, he left. And, and then the, the the incredible thing was after that, Craig, I know many people had been praying for me. I, I know my family was praying and fasting. I know that uh, people in my church were, and, and I was led to believe people across the world. But that day was the day something began to turn around in me. And uh, it was then that was the first time in over two weeks that I began to crave food. And it was that night that I actually craved a packet of Tato prawn cocktail crisps and a tin of Coke. And I think what was my desire, I, I, I remember sort of not praying necessarily audibly, but I remember sort of asking from my heart, oh Lord, what joy it would be to have a packet of prawn cocktail crisps and a tin of coke it was the weirdest of requests and uh you know it it was something that was in my heart it was something that i desired in that moment and the moment that that really i think was astounding for me that that god really answered the desire of my heart was the next day a cleaner a cleaner uh had put his thumbs up through the window. He opened my door. He put a white plastic bag and he pushed it through the door. He closed my door and then he gave me a thumbs up. And I crawled over because I was still awake. I made my way over to this bag and and I couldn't believe inside this bag was prawn cocktail crisps, a tin of Coke and two oranges. <laughs> And I wow. just, I just give him the thumbs up through my window, and I says, "That's my favorite crisp." <laughs> and he just give me the thumbs up back, and I never seen him again wow. after that. And uh, and I just, I sat up for the first time. I sat up, and I opened my bag of crisps, Craig, <laughs> and they were the best bag of crisps that I had had in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so that was quite incredible. And I think what was, you know, began to, to ring through my mind was that God was really beginning to say to me, and this is what I began to experience. I felt the Lord begin to say to me, Lee, I love you. I hear you. I'm with you. And and the joy and the encouragement that that brought. And I just I thank the Lord that this man also heard the voice of God. And I I don't know what he heard. I I haven't seen him again. I I don't know what he experienced. I don't know why he picked prawn cocktail. I don't know why he picked a tin of Coke. I don't know whether there was something deep with it. I I don't know, Craig. But all I know is that I believe God heard my cry. Amen. And he, he answered it. Amen. And it just shows that God cares. If God yeah. cares about those little things, how much more does he care about the bigger things going on in our lives? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know. and Pastor Lee, before we come to a close, 
Can you tell us about the day when you were in hospital and the nurse said to you that your singing is fantastic? Tell us yeah. more about that. <laughs> and it's, it's not fantastic, but, <laughs> but that, that, that day, uh, someone actually had sent me a, a link. They sent me a link of him and his son uh, singing a, a song. I think it's by Shane and Shane, Is He Worthy? Oh, wow, and, yeah. uh, and and as as I'm listening to this song, again lying in the in the bed in the room, as I'm listening to them singing, something within me began to shout out, "He is worthy," and there was a real cry from my heart, listening to them sing, and I started to shout out in my bed, "He is worthy. He is worthy. There's no one else worthy other than Jesus Christ." And I began to sing and shout that out. But it was as if in that moment, Craig, that 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 there was a spirit of praise and worship that just came, and and I went from that and I began to sing, "Great are you, Lord. It is your breath in my lungs, and you give life." And then I began to sing, "No longer a slave to fear." Uh, it was just it was just a moment of time that I began to worship the Lord. But I was singing at the top of my voice, and, and I and I and I never really realised it. it. It just it just was spontaneous, and as I was singing at the top of my voice, and all of a sudden, after about twenty minutes, I just sort of heard this voice shout through the the crack in the door. We loved your singing, <laughs> but we have to close the door now. <laughs> and uh, here's what was. Uh, quite incredible, Craig, after all of this, the nurses started to come to my room and began to ask me, would I begin to pray for them? Mm, wow. wow. So God, God, even in the chaos, is still at work. And he is still doing something that is quite, that is quite mm -hmm. astonishing. And Pastor Lee, as we come to a close, there may be some people watching and their life is in chaos going through struggles, going through trials. Some might not even themselves know about God. So yeah. Pastor Lee, can you close and share a few words to them? Yeah, I think the experience that, that I have sat with this last week, Craig, is this. Romans chapter eight, particularly verses 35 onwards has become alive to me. And that is the question, what shall separate us from the love of God? And then Paul the Apostle goes into shall pearl and sword or nakedness and tribulation, angels, powers, principalities. And then he really rounds it all up and he talks about neither life nor death. But he rounds it all up. There is nothing can separate us from the love of God. And I would include COVID-19 in that. And although I went through absolute hell, I went through many, many dark nights along with my family. We are still absolutely resolute in this one fact that the love of Jesus Christ is still incredible, that he is glorious, that he is wonderful, and nothing can separate me from that love. And I would say to your listeners this, Craig, is cling fast to that chapter. Cling fast that Christ loves you. And Christians go through difficult times but that doesn't mean he doesn't love us. And when we come out the other side, we are still of this great war cry that nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ and the love of God. And should I have not have made it, Craig? I, I praise God that I'm still alive, but should I not have made it, Craig? I would have been experiencing the love of God in a whole new dimension. <laughs> <laughs> That I cling to that, that 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 he loves me. I, I, I'm not going to go on. He loves me. He loves you, and he loves your listeners. And we thank God that we really do have an incredible Savior. Amen. Amen. I could say Amen again and again. Pastor yeah. Lee, thank you so much for oh, taking this time to share your uplifting testimony. That God does privilege. really care. God bless you, my brother, so much, and your family. Thank you. And I encourage Thank you. viewers, guys watching, please keep him and his family in your prayers. And, and you know, thank you. 
and God bless you yeah. and all your, your, your fellowship at the Ark in Belfast. Bless Thank you. you. Take Thank care. You. God bless. Keep going. Well 